Most atoms like to become ions. They do that by gaining or losing electrons. If an atom gains an electron, then it just gained negative charge. It has an overall negative charge, and we call that an anion. However, if an atom loses an electron, it just lost negative charge, so it made it more positive, and we call that a cation. Now, there are certain trends in the periodic table. Things, atoms that are over here, and this is called, in th this column right here, that's called group 1A. This is 1A, 2A, we skip all of this, now this is 3A here, Everything from 3A over generally likes to lose electrons in order to become cations. Things here in group 4A do some different stuff. We'll, uh, they, they form what's called covalent bonds. We're going to get into that later. But for right now, we're just talking about ions. Now, everything from here to here, that's group 5a, 6a, and 7a, they like to gain electrons and become negative, and we call those anions. Now, over here we have the noble gases. They don't like to do anything. They're happy the way they are. And we're going to go into why that is, and we're going to illuminate all of these uh, trends in the periodic table when we talk about electronic configurations. But for right now, let's just just dump this into our heads and this will make things a lot easier for right now memorizing these trends. Now things here in this first column, column 1A or the group 1A, they like, like I said, they like to lose electrons and they only like to lose one at a time and it, it requires a lot more energy for them to lose two and they don't like to just hold on to one. They like to get rid of one electron. So if you lose one electron, you have gained, you basically, now you have a positive charge of plus one. So whenever the, an element from here or an atom from this row is an ion, it generally has a charge of plus one. Likewise, these guys right here, they like to lose two electrons. So if you've lost two electrons, now you have a charge of plus two. This is called the D block. We'll go into why it's called the D block when we do electronic configuration. It could be very tricky. There's no cut and dry method of, of saying, okay, yeah, it always likes to lose one or it always likes to lose two. It gets very tricky. We're going to skip that for right now. Now, when you get over here, with uh, aluminum and such, then these guys like to lose three electrons, giving them an overall charge of plus three. And like I said, these guys do something different, and we'll get to that later. These guys with nitrogen and phosphorus and all that, they like to uh, gain three electrons. And so overall, they have a charge of minus three. These guys like to gain two, giving them an overall charge of minus two. And these guys, the halogens, that's, you know, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, they like to only gain one electron. And this is a nice, if you could just remember this split right here, then you could remember, okay, there's plus three, minus three, plus two, minus two, plus one, minus one. And generally, now this is, it's, with chemistry, there's never any always. You'll never hear a, a chemistry professor say, this always happens, because there's always an exception. So <laughs> generally, if there's an ion from this group, it'll have a charge of plus one. This one will have a charge of plus two. This guy will have a charge of minus one. So very briefly here, I'm going to discuss how to name and a monoatomic ionic compound. So <clears throat> let's say we have an ion of sodium, right? So that's Na. And if we, we, we remember here, okay, it likes, everything here likes to lose one electron. Okay, one electron, if you lost one negative charge, you must have a positive charge. Okay, so that's plus one. 
And let's let's pair that up with an ion from over here. Let's say something that came from chlorine. So it likes to gain one electron. Okay, so now it has a charge of minus one. So when these guys come together, you have a charge of plus one and minus one, and that makes an overall charge of zero. And that's what ions like to do. They like to get down to where there's zero charge. So when you put these guys together, you get a compound like this, NaCl. And now the question is, how do we name this? Well, luckily we read from left to right. And so it's kind of easy to remember a few rules about this. One, when you're naming a ionic compound, you always name the cation first and then the anion. And what I'm saying is it's nice that we, we read from left to right because the cations generally show up on the left side of the periodic table and the anions show up on the right side. So if you ever get confused, oh wait, should I put the, uh, this one on first or that one on first? It's just over here first. Okay, so sodium and that one's first and then that one. So, and the cations are also really easy to name. If there's a cation in an in, a, in an ionic compound, you just say its elemental name. You can look on the periodic table and say Na, and it would, it'll say sodium, and that's what you write. Sodium. Now, naming the anion is a little bit more tricky. You first take the full name of it. In this case, Cl is chlorine. And then you're going to drop the ending. Okay? In this case, it's I and E. And we're going to add ID to it. This is for any monoatomic ion. Now remember, a monoatomic ion is an ion that that's just one atom that is either lost or gained electrons. So when chlorine gains one electron, like it likes to do, we call that the chloride ion. And so to name this, this entire thing, we say the cation name first, then the anion name. So that's sodium chloride. And that would be the name of this compound here. So let's say, let's do another easy one before we get into some complicated ones. Let's say we had the compound KBr. Okay, so it's an ionic compound, and so we're going we're gonna to first name the cation, and then we're going to name the anion. Well, the cation name doesn't change. It's just the name of the element itself. Well, that's potassium. And now this, before it was an ion, it was bromine. But since it's now an ion, we're gonna drop the ene and add ide. You'll do that for all monoatomic ions. And then when you put these guys together, this is potassium bromide. So we're going to get into some rules about what happens when you don't have like charges and how to name those monoatomic ions.